So we're here uh, today, we're going to talk about congenital carapace sequinovirus and congenital vertical talus. Due to the time limitations, we're going to compare both, uh, try to in, uh, put some light into the pathology and the pathomechanics and the treatment of both. Uh, Talipus equino uh, cavo virus is a supination subluxation disease of the subtalar joint. It's uh, a common, rather common disease. It's one in a thousand. Uh, it's important for you uh, to know that the idiopathic type is the commonest type. Idiopathic means you have talipus in an otherwise normal child, but you have to be vigilant looking for associated uh, neurological syndromes, arthrogryposis. Sometimes it's encountered in hereditary syndromes. Uh, the other name for it is clubfoot. As for uh, congenital vertical talus, it's a pronation subluxation disease of the subtalar. Uh, congenital vertical talus is commonly part of uh, syndromes like arthropoposis, neurological syndromes uh, like spina pifida. It might be idiopathic and it's sometimes associated with hereditary syndrome and it's um, very rare compared to telepathy. It's one in 10,000 uh, normal, normal, it's instance is one in, in 10,000. Uh, the other names for its congenital rocker bottom foot deformity, we'll see that later. Congenital bisplanus uh, rigidus. Uh, let's uh, see how it goes. Uh, this picture here is a picture of, um, of an unfortunate child who has both deformities in his uh, feet. Uh, the right side, as you see here, is uh, italicus uh, or clubfoot deformity. The left side is in congenital vertical tails. Uh, this is uh, how the feet appear. This is the talipus, this is the congenital vertical talus. The, uh, the infant is usually referred by the OPG uh, conducting the delivery of the baby. He tells the mother that the foot is deformed. You have to seek orthopedic pediatric consultation. The mother comes to you. My baby's feet is deformed. It's uh, in, in talipus, it's uh, inverted, it's curved, it's, uh, it's deformed. It's not looking normal. And in congenital vertical talus, the mother tells you the, the foot arch looks abnormal it's as if the foot is like a rocker. That is the name rocker bottom foot. The most striking, striking diagnostic criteria of both diseases are the abnormalities that happen in the talo uh, calcaneal divergence angle. This is the AP. Uh, X-rays of a child with club foot, and this is the AP of a child with congenital vertical tails. Uh, I wanna today bridge the gap between the biomechanics and the pathomechanics and the biology. We know there is something called the calcineopedal unit in the foot. The calcineopedal unit is the calcineous with everything in the foot except for the tails. The biomechanical principle is that the calcineopedal unit, the calcineus with all the foot moves on the talus. The talus is a fixed bone. All the talus can do is plantar flex and dorsiflex, but the calcineus can move in three planes. And this is exactly what happens in talipus and in congenital vertical talus. If you looked at this picture here, you would notice that the calcineus, rather than being diverted from the talus, it's internally rotated and its axis is close to match that of the tails. If the calcaneus rotated internally, this is the AP view, if the calcaneus rotated internally, so will all the other components of the foot. That's why when the calcaneus rotates interior, internally to become almost parallel to the talus, everything, everything in the foot moves with the calcaneus on details. In congenital vertical talus, it's even clearer here. The talus is sitting in its place. It's not deviated medially or anything. The calcaneus externally rotate, externally rotate, carrying with it the whole of the foot. Everything in the foot moves out with the calcaneus. So this x-ray shows us that the calcineopedal unit 
in talipus is internally rotated on the talus. And in this X-ray, the calcineopedal unit is externally rotated relative to the talus. In congenital vertical talus, if the calcineopedal unit rotated externally, the talus will lack the support of the calcineus underneath it, and hence it will drop, it will plantar flex, it will become vertical, and hence the name vertical talus. It's clear in the lateral X-ray. In here, in the lateral X-ray, this is the lateral X-rays of a congenital vertical talus. This is a lateral X-rays of a talipus equinovirus. In the congenital vertical talus, why the talus is completely vertical in here? It's completely vertical because, as we saw in the, in the previous X-ray, the calcaneus externally rotated, so the talus is not supported anymore. What happens? The talus completely plantar flexes. When it completely plantar flexes, because it lacks the support of the calcaneus, the navicular, being part of the calcineopedal unit, where will it be? What is the relationship between the navicular and the talus? If everything in the foot is moving with the calcaneus, this means that the navicular will become lateral and the dorsal to the neck of the talus. Lateral and the dorsally dislocated to the neck of the talus. And the child presents to the floor with the head of the talus rather than the calcaneus. Hence the name rocker bottom foot, which means inverted arch of the foot. In talipus, in here, we see that the talar axis is parallel to the calcaneus. How can the calcaneus be parallel to the talus? It can only be parallel to the talus if the calcaneus plantar flexed under the talus. Plantar flexed under the talus. So in the AP view, we saw that the calcaneus in talipus internally rotated with the rest of the foot. In the lateral X-ray, we saw that the calcaneus blunter flexed with the foot relative to the tails. Can the calcaneus blunter flex like in the lateral? And the internal rotate like in the EP in here without Inverting? No, it can't. For the calcaneus to plantar flex and the internal rotate, for the calcineopedal unit to plantar flex and the internal rotate to head, it had to adduct as well. And the same goes for, cal for the congenital vertical talus. In here, the calcaneus externally rotated relative to the talus. And in here, the calcaneus dorsi flexed relative to the talus. You might tell me in here, the calcaneus is not, is not dorsiflexed. It's actually dorsiflexed. Why? When we estimate the position of the calcaneus, we never estimate it relative to the horizontal plane. We estimate the position of the calcaneus relative to the talus. And if you measure the talocalcaneal divergence angle in here, it's increased. This means that the calcaneus has dorsiflexed relative to the talus. This is how the bathoanatomy of the foot in talipus appears. In here, the same as we said before. If you notice, the calcaneus should be divergent from the talus in here, and the whole of the foot should be in front of the talus and the calcaneus in here. This is the normal arrangement. What happened in here? What happened is the calcaneus plantar flexed and the internally rotated under the tails and they carried all the calcineopedal unit with it. That's why, because the calcaneus internally rotated, so did the cupoid and the navicular. The navicular rotated, rotated around the neck of the tails and got very close to the medial malleus. That's why the part of the superficial detroit here is very, very contracted, very contracted. And the head is obscured. You can't see it. You can't approach it from the media side unless you open this gap. If I asked you what is the relationship 
between the tails and the navicular, you will tell me the navicular is part of the calcineopedal unit. If the calcineus internally rotated, it has to plantar flex to internally rotate. So the navicular will be equally plantar flexed and internal plantar flexed and internally rotated relative to the head of the tails. And this is what gives us the famous cave sport of the name. When the calcaneus internally rotates under the talus, it raises the talus up. It raises the talus up. If it raises the talus up, this is the hind part of the medial longitudinal, hind limb of the medial longitudinal arch of the foot. What happens to the first metatarsal and the navicular? The plantar flex relative, relative to the talus going with the calcaneus as part of the calcaneopedal unit. What do you have when you have the tail is dorsi flexed and the first metatarsal plantar flexed as part of the calcineopedal unit, you have cakes. So if we examine the name of congenital talipus equinovarus, congenital is a child is born with it. Talipus, what does it mean? It means if the calcineus internally rotated enough and the plantar flexed enough and abducted, abducted enough, we would actually present to the floor with the lateral aspect of the neck of the tail. This is the talipus. The foot presents to the floor by the talus. Talipus, equino. Why equino? Because the calcaneus plantar flexes. If it plantar flexes, the tendo Achilles will get slack and it shortens. So the hind foot is in equinus, equino, cavo. Why cavus? Because the talus is raised by the increased support of the calcaneus under it. The calcaneus internally rotated and, and the plantar flex, pushing the, ta the talus up, and the navicular and first metatarsal got plantar flexed with the calcaneus, so the median longitudinal arch is ac accentuated. This is the cavus part. Talipus, equino, cavo, varus. Varus is the whole story because calcaneal internal rotation, calcaneal, ad calcaneal adduction, calcaneal plantar flexion are only part of a composite we call sub. Taylor supination. That's why we called the disease a supination subluxation disease. In here, the reverse happens in congenital vertical tails. The calcaneus rotates out from under the talus, and while it rotates out, can't rotate out alone. It has to dorsiflex, as we said, and it has to, it has to abduct, abduct for it to be a single composite pronation movement. Once the calcaneus clears the talus completely, the talus collapses as in here and becomes vertical. And the navicular being part of the calcineopedal unit moves with the calcaneus in a dorsal direction, in a lateral direction, and becomes, as the midfoot becomes dislocated in a lateral, huh, lateral, dorsal manner. I don't want you to find any confusion in the relationship between the talus and the navicular. The navicular is only part of the calcineopedal unit. It moves with the calcaneus. If the calcaneus moves in external rotation dorsiflexion, so will the navicular. Okay? And the child becomes, huh, uh, uh, his arch becomes inverted. This is why we call it rocker bottom foot, and the child moves on the head of the calcaneus. There are classification, multiple classifications for talipus. Uh, the demeglio classification is based on uh, assessment of the different uh, different uh, deformities. It's a scored maximum four for each parameter, so it's sixteen plus four parameters in here. It gives you twenty. Uh, this is the Pirani score. The Pirani score is well explained everywhere. You assess the medial crease, the curved lateral border, the lateral head of the talus. You assess the posterior crease. You assess the heel, if it's empty or uh, or uh, full, if it's empty or full, you assess the rigid equinus, and it's a score of uh, score maximum of six and the minimum of zero. We owe a lot of credit to this man, the great uh, Dr. Uh, Ponsetti, who taught us the principle of the Ponsetti costing. In Ponsetti costing, what do we do? We first increase the supination, the supination of the forefoot 
Why? Because we have to reduce, reduce the midfoot. Remember, we, saw, we said the navicular is plantar flexed on the head of the tail. So we have to dorsiflex it to reduce the midfoot like this. And after we reduce the midfoot, we fulcrum on the neck of the talus. We hold the calcineopedal unit in our hand, and all we do is externally rotated, externally rotated successively till we reach from the internally rotated position to external rotation of the calcineopedal unit 70 degrees. If you notice, you will you will notice that we did only one part of the composite, external rotation of the foot unit. As you do this, it's a composite. It happens all together. So the foot is brought out of equinus, as you see. And if you look from the posterior aspect, the foot will also be brought out of various into the corrected position. It's very important to maintain the correction with the Dennis Brown. The affected foot is Affected foot is held in uh, in uh, uh, 70 degrees uh, foot uh, thigh angle. The unaffected foot in 40 degrees. As for congenital vertical talus, we use the DOPS technique, which which is the reverse of the Ponsetti technique. What do you do? You fulcrum on the neck of the talus. Remember, you push the neck dorsally and laterally, and then you hold the calcineopedal unit from the forefoot, and you push it in one direction. It's uh, it's displaced in external rotation, in congenital vertical tears, in external rotation and the dorsiflexion. What do you do? You push the calcineopedal unit in plantar flexion and the internal rotation, and this will reduce the midfoot. Once the midfoot is reduced, you do open or close the bending of the of the talonavicular uh, joint, and and then uh, after correction of the equinus by tendo Achilles tenotomy. And that will correct uh, congenital vertical tears. Actually, the Ponsetti technique and the reverse Ponsetti technique are ideal treatment options for both. And we hardly need surgery ever, ever nowadays. Thank you.